everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to write a thesis in three months. I'm talking about a PhD thesis. So I actually have mine here. Um, this is my PhD thesis. It's about 220 pages, so quite long. And I wrote mine in three months. I believe I started around May. So I ended in the lab at the kind of mid, I think it was, yeah, I think it was mid-May. It wasn't the beginning, yeah, it was mid-May and the aim was to submit by August. So I had pretty much the same May, June, July and I submitted on the 1st of August. So yeah, three months maximum is how long I took to write my thesis. There were definitely a few things that I did in that time that helped me write in three months and there were also things that I did during my PhD that meant that I was able to write that quickly. Just a disclaimer, I did not start with a blank Word document and write my thesis in three months. I definitely did things throughout my PhD that helped me write in three months. This video is helpful for any PhD students. You might be in your first year, you might be about to write up. I think this is really useful because it really does help you prepare for the writing up stage even if you're years away from it. I do also have a PhD proofreading service so I can proofread your whole PhD. Yes, I have done it before. It does take me ages, but if you do want to know more about that, uh, it is a paid service, of course. If you do want to know more about that, then do send me a message, uh, an email on imanaplace at gmail.com. I can do that in a few days, actually. Okay. The first thing that I did was to use any other pieces of writing that I had from my upgrade. The aim of the upgrade is just to kind of see what you've done so far. By that point, you probably haven't done very much. Uh, but you definitely have to write an introduction and a literature review for your upgrade. What I did was I used those methods and that review to then write and expand on in my thesis. So like I said, I did not start from scratch. If you wrote your upgrade three years ago and your field has progressed so much in that time and then you're still using references from three years ago, it doesn't look very good. So just make sure that you've updated your references to the most recent work um, and you've ensured that you've cross-checked everything and that it is correct. My second tip is to write in any order. The layout for the thesis in the health and science field anyway is usually the abstract, then the literature review or the introduction, the materials and methods, the results, discussion and conclusion and that's how we tend to lay it out. But you do not by any means have to write it in that order. So the first thing is the methods. So always start with the materials and methods. This is not going to change. It's something that you're probably the most comfortable with. It's also the most technical and the most kind of detailed. So being able to list all the things that you need and just going into the lab one day and collecting all that information, um, well, who are the suppliers, what are the concentrations, just being able to do all that is time consuming. Doing the materials and methods first means that you've kind of got the hardest and the easiest part out of the way. It's a section that requires the least discussion it's the method that you did, you just have to put it in and write it appropriately. So definitely start from the materials and methods. And if you are a PhD student that's in their first or second year, start writing your methods up neatly. If you are using a particular method and you know that it's going to be a fundamental part of your project, write it up and just save it in a Word document on your laptop because you are definitely going to come back to that. And having that there, even though it might need a few tweaks later on, it will save you a lot of time and a lot of effort. Secondly, organize your figures and any diagrams, do your stats, do your analysis, <laughs> all of that good stuff. Let's say you don't feel like writing today, just open up your data and make a graph for it, do the statistical analysis. Um, at least then you're still staying uh, productive, but you're doing something that has to obviously be done, but it is something that also requires the least thought. Compared to the introduction that's quite dense and heavy when it comes to information, your data's there, you've probably looked at it, analysed it and studied it so much that it doesn't require as much thought as, for example, the introduction would. I then would write my discussion, so even before the introduction, you've got your figures, you've, you've done your methods and materials, you can just go into the discussion. And again, like I said, you've probably already concluded what you want to write in your thesis. So actually writing the discussion isn't something that is very taxing. So yeah, the discussion is definitely a section that I would write next. Then the last thing that I would do is the introduction. Go back and figure out what information is it that you've written about in your thesis. So in the results, in the discussion, in the conclusion, what it, what is it that you've written about? Thus, what is it that you need to include in the introduction? What is it that the reader has to know before they go on to look at your data? Don't leave it too late though, it does require some time, um, but definitely don't think about it as the first thing that you have to do. The third thing that I did to write my thesis in a short time was to absolutely cut out all lab activities. 
it, it is so hard to do this. I, did, I never wanted to stop. I kept on thinking, oh, if I just do this experiment, if I run this western blot, if I do this bit of cloning, if I do this and that, I'll get that a little bit more, which will help me get, you know, conclude this and or disprove this or show this and it, 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 it piles up. You should stop trying to produce any more raw material, just stop at one point. And like I said, it is so hard because research can really just go on forever but just find a point where you say this is enough the next thing that i did was to set targets for what i wanted to do for that day that week that month i would set a target so you can set targets as to what section you want to write today how many figures you want to edit how many graphs you want to produce how long you want to write so you could say to yourself you know what i'm going to write today for two hours and that's all i want to do i know that there was some students in my lab who finished their research and then went to thesis rights, but the first month was just spent analysing data, which is frustrating because you can't actually start writing until you've analysed your data and you know what it is you're writing about. The way that I did it was I gave myself small targets from different sections and different chapters. So I never just wrote one chapter for the whole day. I said to myself, all right, for the morning, you're going to focus on the materials and the methods and you are going to write the method of X, Y, Z. And then in the afternoon, you are going to construct some figures. So in one day, I, it meant that I had at least touched and edited two different chapters, which meant that I felt like I was doing more. The next thing that I did was to send my work to my supervisor to be edited as soon as I had got it completed. The methods work was the first chapter that I actually finished. So I sent that to him as soon as I finished it, which was even, I think was one month into thesis writing. And like I said, that's not going to change. So I sent it to him and he sent me back edits and that was the only time he saw it. It really depends on your situation as well because I know some supervisors might want to see the whole thesis in completion. Whereas mine said, actually, just send me what you've done. In the end, when I gave him the full thesis, he didn't actually edit it completely from top to bottom because he had seen pretty much most of it so he just looked at the conclusions and the discussion which is the most important parts and also the introduction as well to make sure that it all matches up. The next thing I did was to take time over the details that do matter. So for example I did a lot of cloning so I needed to know what my oligos were in terms of their sequences, what their accession numbers were, where I got them from and you'd be surprised how much information you forget about things that you did three years ago and just trying to dig back in for that information into my emails. <laughs> I was emailing the suppliers to ask them what the, the accession numbers were because I had just forgotten going into databases, trying to find out what the, the actual numbers are. It's probably one of the most important things that you can do. Don't forget that your research has to be reproducible. It has to be something that someone can go and copy. So they have to be able to go and purchase the exact same constructs that you have and use the exact same reagents, the same concentrations. So you do have to make sure that every little detail is there and that takes time. If you are a first or second year PhD student, then just make sure that as you go along, you're collecting all of the information that even you think might not be relevant. Make sure you're collecting all the data sheets that you get when you order anything. One thing that I did was I had a folder that any data sheet that I got when I ordered anything, be it a reagent, it just it literally anything, a construct, I would take that information sheet and just staple it and just put it into a folder. So whenever I needed to know what the methods were, the concentrations, or even the product name or number, I had all of the product sheets there for me. And I, I think it was useful for not only me, but my lab members as well, because no one else did that. The other thing that's really important is statistics. And that takes a lot of time, being able to analyze your work statistically but also to know which stats to use. I think for me, it was a struggle. I know a lot of students have the same issue. What stats do you use? You learn about so many different stats and it seems like everything fits. Different tests give you different results and it's really hard to know which one to use. I spoke to a statistician, um, every university would have one, I spoke to her and I told her what my experiment was, she suggested which test to use and I also obviously spoke to my supervisor and we decided on which test to use, what kind of t-test to use um, and which data to include, which not to include and then in your actual results you do need to make sure that you're, you're justifying everything that you do, you're justifying why you took out any data, why you included data, why you didn't do a different test, it just has to be, you have to be able to explain stats really well especially for your viva so being able to understand what you're doing why you're doing it why you didn't do something else and what the results show 
is really important to be able to articulate because like I said in your Viva you will a thousand percent be asked about your stats. And lastly this is another really important thing that I did that helped just bring everything together quickly is to reference as I went along. Do not leave, guys do not do this, do not leave your references until the last minute. Do not just write and then kind of just put the references in brackets and casually just go along. I have I'll tell you how many references I have, and I'll tell you why this is why it, won't, it just won't work. I have um, how many pages of references? So I've got about, let's see, 20. I've got about 40 pages of references. Um, granted, they are on double, you can't see that, but granted, they are double spaced and quite large text and it's single paged. But still, it's a lot of references. It's probably at least 200 references and you will have loads of references. So can you imagine, can you imagine writing your introduction, writing everything, because references go all the way through your thesis. They're in the methods, especially in the methods. Um, they are definitely in your discussion and your conclusion and also heavily in your introduction. So they're not just in one chapter, they are everywhere. So can you imagine going through 200 pages of writing to find every reference, to then have to find the paper, to then have to go and do referencing, you will spend a couple of weeks, at least two weeks doing that. And you probably will make a mistake and that will probably cost you in your Viber. So do not do that. Make sure that you are referencing as you go along. I personally use Mendeley. And I think for my needs, it was perfectly fine. I think I'm just comfortable with quite simple software and I think it's really easy and very intuitive to use. So I downloaded the Word plugin uh, for Mendeley. I also did a very, very similar thing with my figures. I know a lot of people when they write legends, they manually write it. Don't do that. Go to insert and then it says caption. When you insert a caption, you can decide to insert a figure caption. You can decide to insert a table caption and there's a few other options as well. Again, I think this is a really underrated way to make sure that everything stays consistent in your document. Um, and then when you actually cross-reference that figure, so in your text, you might have, you know, bracket figure, C figure one or whatever figure one. Um, Again, don't just write figure one, go to insert, cross-reference, and then select which figure it is you want to cross-reference. Now what that does, it just, it just makes life so much easier because let's say you decide to delete a figure or a table. Let's say that you decide to insert a figure or table in between. You then have to change all the rest of the numbers to match because now you've got something in between one and two, so you now need one, two, and three. You then have to go through all of your text to change the references and the in-text references and that takes a lot of time. It's just smooth and it's clean and it's just foolproof and I absolutely love it. And it's one of the methods that I think I just stumbled across. Thesis writing is, is, is honestly a mystery, you only really realise what you're doing when you finish doing it. I really hope this video gave you an insight on how I wrote my PhD thesis in three months, a bit less than three months actually. Um, but do not feel under pressure that you have to write yours in three months as well, if you're given six months to write it, take six months but I know sometimes we end up doing experiments right to the end and we don't have that long left and then we get really panicked and really stressy about it but trust me guys if I can vlog and write my thesis at the same time then I know you guys can do it too. I think bits as you go along really does help make the whole process that much smoother but yeah don't forget to subscribe to me on YouTube I'm still why do I I still feel like I'm new to this sometimes don't forget to follow me on YouTube no, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, subscribe to me on YouTube, and don't forget to give me a huge like, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!